area. Uh, we are located in the Arctic Lapland above the Arctic Circle and uh, the climate change here happens faster than it does in the southern parts of the Europe. Thus we are seeing uh, quicker changes in the nature. Uh, one of the uh, dominant changes is uh, that we're having less days under minus 30 degrees uh, in the winter time, which makes it possible for a different type of larvae to survive. And uh, there's a special larvae that um, then eats the fiel birch trees bare um, and can make vast uh, destruction. And the fiel uh, Björks are uh, the, one of the main habitats in this area. So that's uh, one very visible effect of the climate change. Even during the coldest uh, months, uh, January and February, it could be uh, above zero temperatures, which means uh, the snow is melting and uh, it, the river starts opening up uh, certain places. Uh, we also have uh, quite a little bit of uh, maintenance work. Uh, in the cabins we transport wood and uh, do some other hev the heavy lifting in winter with the snowmobiles. And this also is a challenge when the weather is uh, changing. Uh, it becomes uh, very wet to drive and also the river again opens up a lot. The, the most visible probably is that some animals are moving uh, upwards and uh, these are animals which are not very uh, favoured by among the people like ticks. Ticks are nowadays uh, on the very tops of the Krkonosian mountains regions so you can get a tick uh, on the top of the Mount of Snežka, which, which is the highest point of the country. 20 years ago or 25 years ago it, it wouldn't be possible. And the second uh, animal species which is uh, nowadays present on the uh, tops of the ridges is uh, for example the wild boar. What causes the problem uh, especially for the biodiversity uh, because wild boars are for example predating uh, uh, black grouse. Black grouse is very rare species uh, in uh, the central Europe uh, and in our National Park is uh, one of the two last remnant populations in the countries. And then the moving upper tree line, that our upper tree line is uh, moving very fast, uh, 43 centimeters a year above the sea level, uh, upwards. And that's a very serious problem. Our biggest is uh, drought. Um, the drought, the longer drought periods are um, coming with a, a, a higher risk of uh, wildfire and as our area has a lot of pine forest that's a major threat. The biggest uh, issue is the change uh, in the distribution of the precipitations during the year. Let's say during winter we have uh, quite a lot of rain and also still some snowfall. But in summer we even uh, after, after and after uh, face uh, long periods of drought, which uh, means that uh, landscapes which were also uh, a little bit cultural are uh, starting to collapse, like, uh, like spruce monocultures uh, are uh, practically eaten off by uh, bark beetle and uh, so it's a huge uh, change in the landscape. We had very severe water loss uh, at our uh, marshland peat bog areas and uh, it was severed in the past uh, by drainage channels. Water regime, runoff uh, regime, these are the features which are really important for uh, for our region because we are a mountain region so the, the change with the water could be really big also for other features such as other animals, yes. Our uh, habitats are connected to warm uh, climates so for us it's quite a uh, good, let's say, a good uh, time because uh, new species are spreading to, to our national park. 
but on the other hand we are a river uh, valley so the river is drying but uh, we have a good source of water from the dam up to the up to the national park so we can manage it and it's not too big task for us like here in in Norway Unfortunately, I have to say that uh, we cannot do anything uh, on our own with the climate change itself, of course. So we cannot do anything with the movement of the upper tree line or with the movement of the animal species. What we can do is uh, to adapt uh, the landscape, uh, to improve uh, the measures uh, which has been taken by our predecessors uh, uh, in the past. Uh, when they tried to uh, to plant and to grow uh, the, the the productive forests uh, even in the upper parts of the mountains, and they they uh, drainaged uh, the the forests uh, by the channels, and now uh, we are interrupting the channels and uh, re uh, renewing the, the original hydrological system uh, of the mountain ranges. Uh, restore the natural, uh, natural water regime, so we are trying to block the drainage ditches. Uh, and not only that, we are trying to work with, um, uh, with the water uh, in the landscape as a complex, so we want to restore the spring area uh, the uh, wetlands, but also uh, the uh, the streams, so water courses, so everything, so that everything can um, can work again. So we are trying to restore uh, and then leave it on the, on the nature. So we are um, looking for ways to stop the drainage channels, leading away the water, and um, enable better water retention. Because yeah, water uh, loss uh, is degrading the peatland areas severely. Wildfire management plans for the several areas which are prone to wildfire. Uh, we'll make them with the local managers and municipality and the fire brigade to have everybody involved. Um, we already did a project on this subject and it has proven of uh, great importance that the fire brigade and the nature managers are thinking about solutions together. Well, currently um, we're just looking into the adaptation strategies. We're running a project uh, together with Norway, Norway and uh, Sweden to learn how to do climate change adaptation for protected areas. And we're looking for help with the US National Park Service, who is very uh, advanced in this. So um, hopefully in a couple of years uh, we have a list of concrete actions that we can actually do on a management plan level. The main strategy is uh, simply leave nature adapt so, uh, so we don't, uh, uh, so we don't uh, try to intervene so much but we try to more leave uh, the natural processes run. But what we have to do a little bit is uh, to, to manage uh, like wild living animals like red deer uh, or roe deer because uh, if we want to have a forest for the future it is uh, quite important to keep here a balance. This is in, in fact the, 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 the one of the messages I got here. So it's important and crucial to do it on the bigger scale level than only on the, the locals. Because if, if you just deal something locally without knowledge of, of, uh, of the global problem and the global consequences of this action, you can destroy many things. So it is, uh, it is crucial to think about the whole uh, complex of, uh, of the nature and the landscape. We definitely should cooperate across the border, uh, especially in, in these transboundary parks, because there the forest doesn't stop at the border. 
Um, we can use, we can learn valuable lessons from each other because everybody experiments and everybody's looking for the best solutions uh, and it's important to exchange them. And it's especially important to know each other across the border. So it would be more easy to cooperate in case of an emergency. <coughs> Climate change is the same on both sides of the border. So, so, so in that sense, it's, it's really a common case. And, and of course, there are some national differences in resources and in land use. But I think it is, what, is, what is the role of, the, of this? This transboundary uh, parks and and the transpark net uh, network is is, uh, is to create a forum for discussion as it as, as, as it has been here today. Well, I think the uh, cross border cooperation gives you a lot of perspective. It's um, nice to hear that people are facing. Uh, similar challenges so that we can think about the solutions together for those um, but then when you actually put things into action I think that happens easier on a national level but for gathering the input and understanding the the, the scale of the challenges that we have here especially in the Arctic areas the borders don't really mean that much so it's really rewarding to have the discussions uh, nature has no borders as we always say and uh, definitely you cannot uh, imagine to do something for nature uh, without having good cooperation with your neighbors There are many inspirations we <laughs> got here, uh, maybe, maybe also too many, it will need some time to settle. But uh, I think the strongest uh, impressions I have uh, is uh, uh, the kind uh, of uh, communication, how different areas communicate uh, uh, the global uh, climate change uh, towards local people. <laughs> I always learn something new and that's one of the reasons I like to attend. So uh, I'm also always taking notes for my colleagues to multiplicate what I have learned here. And I think it's very, very important to to look at how other regions and other habitats uh, cope with the current challenges. Well, I like the framework that uh, it's, I think it's an enlightenment for everybody who will wor who's working um, in the transboundary area because uh, it is it's it's a step to get an easier um, it's an easier way to understand what you are doing and if you are doing it in yeah in the right way and I think I will bring it back home and 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 present it to my my colleagues. The climate change is a global problem and, and there is no one solution so there are many ways how to adapt on the global change uh, but the important thing in my opinion is to exchange the, uh, the, um, the knowledge and the experiences and try to uh, to do something reasonable. So for me um, it was really exciting to see how a similar pro problems in different localities are uh, solved or are uh, discussed. Uh, especially today's meeting, uh, uh, the, the, the second day of the meeting of, uh, of the TransparkNet 2024, uh, I would uh, say that it was very inspiring. When I will come back home, I will, uh, or we will as a national park, uh, speak maybe to, towards the public much more than, than, than until today about the problem of, uh, of the climate change. Yeah, I think the experience has uh, shown from the um, Czech and German colleagues with their forest fires. Are, um, in, are, I'm going to take them home and bring them into our discussions about how to prepare or um, prevent uh, fires. Well, I really loved the presentation uh, from Czech Republic on how they had um, a work with um, water flows and an increase in the 
the water flow level to be the surface level water flow and they had um, um, adapted to climate change or resisted the climate change in that way. So that's definitely a presentation that I will turn back to and share with my organization to see if that's something we could use. I think what I take with me is uh, that we need more communication on climate changes. We don't reach the people, local people, with this problem of climate change. I would say climate change is like a comet coming to Earth, down to Earth. And if we have a comet in the orbit, everybody takes care to get rid of this risk. But we are not doing with climate change. So that's what I take with me, that we have to do more. It's been a really nice few days and a good uh, balance between uh, seminars and uh, learning new things and uh, social trips, I think. That I got new ideas from, for the future and yeah, to develop because you can compare with the others and looking how they are doing it. And, it's like it helps a lot. We are not able to do on ourselves much with the climate change. We are just one national park in the world and that's the worldwide issue. Our visitors are part of the globe. So if we will speak about, uh, about the climate change issue with them, we can, we can be part of the party which invites the public on board. Uh, to, to tackle the, the problem of the climate change. And that's, that's something I, I will try to bring with me from here uh, to my home.